Welcome to your Nexus 2 help guide. This session is on licensing. I will begin the session with an overview into the mechanics behind how Nexus is licensed and the type of licenses that can be issued. We will then walk through the process of requesting and activating a license and how you might access a license over a network. We will finish with a discussion into how you might check out a commuter license and how you can move licenses across different PCs or networks. If you want to jump to any of these topics, please use the timestamps found in the description of this video. All current Vicon software, including Nexus 2, is licensed using a license file. License files are managed using the Vicon Automated Unified Licensing Tool, or Vault. Vault can be accessed through Nexus through the Help menu or through the Start menu in Windows. Machines installing Nexus 2 for the first time are automatically granted a 30-day trial license. License files can be locked to a PC or a dongle. Just a couple points of clarity though with regards to the dongle. First, Nexus 1 dongles cannot be used to license Nexus 2 or vice versa. Second, a dongle can license multiple computers, whereas a single computer will have difficulty using multiple dongles. This is because the license file must match with the dongle ID. There are two types of licenses, standalone and network. A standalone license is one that is locked to a single machine. It is typically used when a user is going to be permanent, i.e. long-term, or you have a fixed number of users. This is because moving licenses from machine to machine is not an immediate process. A standalone license is also the best option when the machine is going to be remote as it does not require network access. In general, the standalone license is best for faculty and long-term students and employees as you don't have to worry about a CELA license being permanently used. In contrast, a network license is hosted on a SafeNet license server which can be installed as part of the Nexus 2 installation process. It is the best option when it is necessary that the licenses be floating, that is, multiple seats of the license available to a variable group of users at any one time. However, you will have to make sure that all users are part of the same network and the license server is running. If your network is prone to inaccessibility, this may not be the best option. A network license is also a good option if you want to issue short-term licenses, which can all be managed by the end user. If a user intends to be remote for a while, a commuter license can be issued for up to 30 days. This process will be discussed in further detail later on in this video. Network licenses, in general, are best for temporary users, such as undergraduate students or consultants. In general, I think it is best practice to have a few standalone licenses on machines that you will know will be permanent and have the rest be networked so the licenses can be managed locally and you do not have to worry about a user permanently holding onto a license they should not have. To request a license, you are going to need to go into Vault. I'm actually going to access Vault twice, so I'm going to do this first through the Start menu in Windows. So select Start, All Programs, Vicon, then Licensing, and Vicon Product Licensing. In my vault, you'll actually see multiple uh, softwares. Uh, most likely yours will be blank, um, but you're gonna come in to request license. You're gonna go ahead and select the product version, fill in your contact details, select the type of license that you would like according to that last slide. Uh, if you select a network license, you'll see that you can specify the number of seats. Uh, you do not need to worry about the entitlement code. And then if you have Outlook configured on your machine, you can go ahead and just email that request directly and it'll go to support at Vicon.com. If not, click Save Request to a File, navigate to a folder where you want to save this, uh, save this file, a license file. So I'll select the desktop, select the folder, and then go ahead and click OK. And you can see that it's written in XML to my desktop. Again, it is asking to, for you to send this to support at Vicon.com. So I'll go ahead and close that. Once you get the uh, license file back, um, there will be instructions inside the email, which will look like this. All the instructions for how you're going to license your machine are included in this email, but I will go over this now. So first go ahead and save that file to a location that you can uh, find. Then you're going to access Vault again. So I'm going to do this this time through Nexus. So help, Vicon product licensing. 
And this time, instead of selecting request license, I'm going to select activate license. I'm going to navigate to where that license was saved. So that's going to be in my licenses folder. And then select the correct license file. So that's going to be like a Nexus. I'm then going to press activate from file. And mine's actually going to show that it was previously activated. But you should see something uh, in here about how your license was active. I'm going to go ahead and close this window. And then on that software version, I'm going to go ahead and right click and select use this license for Nexus. If you want to access a seat from a license that is being hosted on a server, go ahead and enter Vault again. Then go ahead and select Change so that we can find that server. Click Discover and it'll locate all the servers. And the one I'm looking for is actually this one. So I'm going to double click to make sure that it's active and then select OK. This list will refresh with the different licenses. You can see here I've now got a Nexus 2 license that's got 10 seats, eight of which are currently free. I'm gonna right click and then say use this license for Nexus. Now I'm using a license off of that network server instead of off of my local machine. A commuter license is a license that is generated from temporarily removing a seat from the network license. This allows users to have access to the software even when working off the network and can be made valid for up to 30 days. There are two ways of generating a commuter license for a user. The first is with the user's machine connected to the network. The second is when the machine is remote and not on the network. To check out a license with the user's machine on the network, open Vault and point the license server to the correct host. So I'm going to go ahead and click Change, and then Discover again, and then correct, uh, select the correct uh, server, in this case, this one. I will see the licenses populate again. And then what I can do is right click on an asset, and then select Check Out. I will then go ahead and make sure that everything is correct in the settings, that the desired commuter days is correct, and then go ahead and click Check Out. I will now see another instance of that asset populate, but with this, the type of the license set to commuter. I will right click on this license and select use this license for Nexus. When I'm done with this commuter license, I can simply let the time expire, so I can wait until October 1st, or I can check the license back in by right clicking on this asset and selecting check in. I will now see this asset disappear and the seats return back to 10 of 10. To generate a license for a remote machine, there are three main steps. I will show you these steps here and not toggle back and forth between the license network machine and the remote machine. Step one, on the remote machine, generate a locking code. This can be obtained by clicking the View Remote Locking Code button within Vault. You will need to send this file to the machine with a network license. You can email it directly if you have Outlook configured or save it to a file and then transfer it to the network machine. So if you want to save it to a specific path, go ahead and click on the save icon, specify the path, and then give it a name as well. I've actually already got a uh, locking code from another machine uh, saved onto a USB right now. Step two, on the machine with the license server, right click on the asset and select check out. Once again, check the commuter days. It is actually more vital for remote license checkout as you cannot check the license back in before it expires. This will have a warning sign when you click remote checkout as shown down here. So I'm going to go ahead and load that locking code from the file and it's on the USB and you'll see it appear here and then I'm going to go ahead and click checkout. Now it's going to give you a commuter license which you will now need to transfer back to the remote machine. Again, if you have Outlook configured on this machine, you can just type in the email address here and it'll do it automatically for you. Alternatively, what you will need to do is save that file again to a location that you can find and transfer it over to the remote machine. So I can click the save icon, locate the path, save it, uh, and then uh, proceed as, as needed. Step three, on the remote machine, activate the license. 
This can be done in the same way as shown with a regular license file through the Activate License File window. So I'll click on Activate License, locate that file, and then go ahead and activate it. There are many reasons why you may want to move a license. This includes, but is not limited to, reformatting your computer, replacing components in your computer such as the Ethernet card or hard drive, replacing the computer or network license server entirely, or changing the license type. If you are only adding seats to a network license, you can simply request a new license with the total number of seats. Moving a license allows the Vicon support team to reallocate the license to another location so you do not face the unintended consequence of using multiple license seats for the same user or network. If you do not move a license before changes are made, this may permanently lock a seat onto that machine and the total number of available seats will be reduced. To begin moving a license, you will first need to open Vault and then right click on the asset and select Revoke. In the new window, fill in your information and if your Outlook is configured, go ahead and send the email from this window. If it is not, save it to a file and then email it to support at vicon.com. It is important that this is done before any changes such as reformatting or replacing computer components has been done. Once you have sent in the revocation email, please go ahead and request the license from the new machine. Thank you for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions about your hardware or software, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at vicon.com.